A lot of new and exciting things have been announced during the livestream for Genshin Impact, and these are the top 5 new features coming with the 1.5 update. Probably one of the most important and game-changing mechanic will be the newly introduced housing system, where you'll get your very own teapot realm that you can travel into and set up your new home. And from the looks of it, there's going to be various materials required in order to craft things like furniture, structures, and even companions, and one of them looks like to be wood, which hasn't been revealed how we're going to obtain it, but judging from the way this crafting is structured, there's also going to be some sort of a trust system with the new teapot friend companion you'll have. And the main currency to purchase furniture or other things inside your housing system will be the coins that you can earn in a very similar way like resin, where after some time, you can accumulate the coins and then redeem them. But what's better about this than resin is that you can actually increase the amount of frequency of coins you earn depending on how much furniture you replace in your home, so make sure to add a lot of things to generate the most amount of coins. So it seems to be that we're finally going to have our very own home to build around, and it's going to be a very exciting period for those who enjoy not only building their own settlement, but also looking for inspiration at other players' houses. Either way, this is one of the biggest things that will define 1.5 update, even if there's more new insane things coming our way. Just when you thought Mihoyo already had us with their exciting Peculiar Wonderland event, there's plenty more limited time game modes coming our way, and some of them are going to completely change the way we look at Genshin. And probably the most major event of this update is going to be something called an Energy Amplifier storyline, where you will be presented with a series of mini dungeons and special sites in the world that require you to power up these things called Fractured Fruit Fragments. And while this isn't something we haven't seen already, the real surprise here are going to be the special stages, where the whole purpose of the event is to use the fruit fragments you've collected and put them into special slot system, where it will power up your whole team, much like you would see something in other gacha games that use a rune system. However, it seems these powers will only persist in the challenge stages you will be taking on, and that's because they have been designed in a very similar way compared to the Hypostatic Symphony event we had seen in 1.2 update, but this time around, you'll get to collect these power-ups from the mentioned dungeons and world sites and then use them to your advantage to have an easier time beating these special stages. Now on the more casual side of things, there's going to be an event that will feature two factions fighting against each other in a playful party mode where one side are the raccoons and the other one will be hunters and without spoiling too much, there's going to be various stages and abilities you will need to use in order to bring victory for your team. You could say this is going to be our very first player versus player event in Genshin Impact, but if you were ever in the need to explore a dungeon after doing so many domains and abyss stages, this next event features a series of instances where you will be provided with trial characters by the game, and each dungeon is going to have its own objectives and rules. For example, in one instance you'll generate extra points by doing plunge attacks, while in another, it could be healing that gets rewarded. The last of the major events we saw on the livestream is going to be a limited quest to locate and fight a mysterious hilly churl with the help of Elon Musk and surprisingly, other hilly churls as well. It's not clear yet why these cute tribes people want one of their own kind defeated, but we'll find out soon enough. Finally, there's going to be a couple of opportunities to save up on resin by getting double the amount of talent books in the overflowing mastery event, which looks to be like the one we already had with ley lines, so each day up to 3 times, you will be able to double up on your rewards by only spending 20 resin. So in total, we're getting a lot of events that will have many new mechanics for us to play with and explore, and this is only the things that will be coming and going in the game, but this next part covers everything that's here to stay for good. With the new 1.5 update, we're finally going to be revisiting Dragon Spine, or at least small part of it, thanks to the new world boss that's getting introduced into the game. And even though there's not much originality in it, since it's just your good old, regular giant cube of death, but at least from the previews we've seen, the fight is looking to be pretty intense, since there's also going to be the freezing cold, and we'll need to stand near a source of warmth to keep ourselves alive. And while the rewards haven't been fully disclosed, it will most likely contain ascension materials required by new and upcoming crowd characters in the game. But the big reveals don't stop there, because an ancient and massive Geo Bishop will be challenging your team in the nearest future, and from the looks of it, it looks terrifying to say the least, and makes you wonder just how much more important will shields be, or will we have different opportunities to stop the incoming attacks. And it seems to be that this might just be a new weekly boss, which means we'll need to collect a lot more different talent ascension materials for future characters. Now for those who are looking to mix up their Spiral Abyss experience, there's going to be a unique Abyss Herald introduced for this very specific mode, and what's 
different about this enemy is that it's named Abyss Lector, and it's also of an Electro type element, and so far he seems like a very menacing opponent we will get to fight against. Finally, there's also going to be a new domain added, and it will come with two new artifact sets, one of which is going to be very exciting for physical damage dealers, while the other one seems to be focused around improving characters like Zhongli or Diona, who scale off their health and also empower their teams with skills. And in all honesty, this is looking to be one of the most content-packed updates in the game, and we haven't even gotten through the whole video yet. The long-awaited new characters have been finally revealed, and this time around, we're getting new 5-star and 4-star additions into the game, and the first one we're taking a look at is Eula, who's a Cryo Claymore fighter that specializes in slash attacks from her elemental skill, and can also summon an awesome greatsword that follows her around and explodes after a while. Now, the other one is going to be Yanfei, who is a 4-star Pyro Catalyst that likes to set groups of enemies ablaze, and while we have a lot of Pyro characters already in the game, especially now that she's a second Pyro Catalyst next to Klee, at least she's going to be an unaffordable option for most of the player base due to her rarity and from the looks of it, she seems like an exciting character to use when you need a damage dealer against bigger groups of enemies. Now when it comes to our favorite thing, the banners, we're going to have two of them and many players will be excited to hear that Zhongli is going to be making a return that will also feature Yenfei on his banner and then obviously it's going to be Eula's own banner. The order in which they appear still hasn't been confirmed fully nor do we know which other 4 stars will be featured along with them, still those who want to obtain one of the best shielders in the game now have an opportunity to do so in 1.5 update. Unlike the previous updates, there's not a lot of quality of life changes coming into the game, but that doesn't mean this next improvement isn't going to be impactful, because we're going to be getting reduced costs for resin that you need to spend in order to complete the weekly bosses, which you'll be able to do up to 3 times every single week. Also, if you're one of the people who consistently misses out on completing their events, Mihoyo is implementing a new in-game mail reminder system that will let you know when things are about to end, so that you have enough time to complete all the leftover tasks. And for those who have trouble maintaining Maintaining their storage size, you will now be able to delete and download language packs, which means you can get rid of the ones you're not using currently and save up on your storage space. And most surprisingly, we're also going to be getting a boost in certain rewards if you continue playing co-op together, although it's not clear if everything gets doubled or only the friendship score. But to quickly summarize, one of the most major things introduced into the game is going to be a housing system that's going to have various mechanics like trust points, coins, and furniture collection, so you'll be busy decking out your new crib at the teapot realm. Then we also saw a lot of events that are coming, one of which involves collecting fragments of power and using them in very challenging fights so those who have weaker teams or characters can capitalize on this system. And afterwards, we saw three enemies getting introduced into the game, which are going to be a new world boss, the Cryo Hypostasis, an ancient and powerful Geo Bishop as a weekly challenge, and finally, a Lector, who's waiting for you at the Spiral Abyss. Of course, the last thing that's important to mention are the new characters, which are going to be Eula, a 5-star Cryo Claymore character, and Yenfei, a 4-star Pyro Catalyst user who's going to be featured together with Zhang Li, who's also coming back on a rerun banner. Now all of this of course is awesome, but at the end of the livestream, we surprisingly got hit with the news about Inazuma and had the chance to see some of the concept art and screenshots from the game, but it seems to be this is only a sneak peek preview and the new zone won't be coming with 1.5, which is already chock full of content, but at least we know that our destination towards the Lightning Land is coming closer than ever. There's a lot of exciting news about Genshin's new update, and if there's any mistakes included, make sure to check the pinned comment, and depending on when you're watching this, there's probably going to be codes to redeem free Primo Gems, so make sure to check out the pinned comment either way. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and gently press the like button. For more up-to-date news, follow us on Twitter, link in the description. Thank you for watching us, and see you in the next video.